Reading from the first book of Samuel. There was a man of Benjamin named Kish, the son of Abel, the son of Zerah, the son of Becherath, the son of Aphiah, a Benjamite, a strong and valiant man. He had a son named Saul, a handsome young man. There was no one among the Israelites more handsome than he, he stood head and shoulders above all the people. Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to his son Saul, Take one of the servants with you, and arise, go and look for the donkeys. So they passed through the mountains of Ephraim and through the land of Shalisha, but they did not find them. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, and there they were not. Also, they went through the land of Benjamin, but they did not find them. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, This is the man of whom I spoke to you. He shall reign over my people. Saul approached Samuel at the gate and said, Tell me, please, where is the house of the seer? Samuel answered Saul, I am the seer. Go up before me to the high place, for today you shall eat with me, and tomorrow I will let you go and will tell you all that is on your mind. The next morning Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him, saying, Has not the Lord anointed you to be prince over his people, Israel? You shall reign over the people of the Lord, and you will save them from the hand of their enemies who surround them. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Proclamation of the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Mark Glory to you, Lord. At that time Jesus went out again to the seashore. A large crowd came to him and Jesus taught them. As he was passing by, Jesus saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and said to him, Follow me. Levi got up and followed him. And it happened that while Jesus was dining at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also dining with Jesus and his disciples. Indeed, there were many who followed him. Some scribes who were Pharisees saw that Jesus was eating with tax collectors and sinners. So they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Having heard this, Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Today, I would like to begin our reflection with a question, have you ever felt like a person on the fringes of society? Someone who is ignored, rejected, or even despised by others? Perhaps you have experienced this feeling at some point in your life, whether due to your choices, your appearance, your background, or your circumstances. The truth is that all of us, at some point, have felt excluded or judged. It is a common human experience, and I believe many of you can identify with it. But what do the scriptures tell us about this feeling of exclusion? How can we find comfort, hope, and even transformation amid these situations? Today, I bring you a message of hope based on the powerful biblical passages from the first book of Samuel and the Gospel according to Mark. These stories show us that God not only sees those who are marginalized but also calls them, transforms them, and uses them to fulfill his purposes. In the first reading we encounter Saul, a young man from the tribe of Benjamin. He was tall and handsome but was not recognized as a leader. In that society, royalty was not assigned to someone from his tribe, but God had other plans. God looked at Saul and saw a potential leader, even when others did not see him that way. It is interesting to note that Saul was searching for his father's donkeys when he encountered the prophet Samuel. He was preoccupied with mundane tasks, but God had him in mind for something greater. God looks beyond our concerns and daily tasks, seeing who we truly are and who we can become. In the Gospel, we find an even more marginalized character, Levi, also known as Matthew, a tax collector. Tax collectors were despised by society at that time, considered traitors and sinners. However, Jesus saw beyond Levi's profession and saw in him a disciple. Jesus not only called Levi to follow him but also sat down to eat with him and his fellow tax collectors. 
This action caused scandal and outrage among the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who questioned why Jesus would associate with such sinful and despised people. Jesus' response was clear and powerful, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus came for the excluded, the marginalized, those who acknowledge their need for healing and redemption. He came to bring hope and transformation to all, regardless of their social position or reputation. Dear brothers and sisters, these stories teach us that God sees beyond appearances, beyond our limitations and circumstances. He calls us individually, knows us by name, and has a special plan for each of us, regardless of how others see us. Just like Saul and Levi, we are called to respond to God's call and follow him. We are invited to set aside fear, insecurity, and even shame we may feel due to our exclusion or past mistakes. God invites us to trust in his grace, in his unconditional love, and in his ability to transform our lives. We must remember that, as disciples of Jesus, we are called to imitate his example. Jesus not only associated with the marginalized but also welcomed and loved them. He saw beyond labels and appearances, recognizing the dignity and intrinsic value of each person. As followers of Jesus, we are called to do the same. We are called to look beyond appearances and stereotypes, to see beyond differences and judgments. We are called to welcome, love, and reach out to the marginalized, the excluded, and those who suffer. This may mean reaching out to a co-worker who has been rejected by others, offering friendship and compassion. It may mean supporting someone struggling with addiction instead of judging and condemning them. It may mean welcoming immigrants and refugees into our communities instead of closing our doors. But it is not just about external actions. We also need to look within ourselves and see where we may be marginalizing others in our thoughts, words, and attitudes. We all have tendencies to judge, exclude, and close ourselves off in our own circles. We need to be aware of this and challenge ourselves to grow in understanding, empathy, and love. At this moment, I invite each of you to reflect on your own life. Where have you seen exclusion, marginalization, or judgment? Who are the marginalized in your own community, workplace, or family? How can you respond to God's call to welcome and love these people? The answers to these questions may not be easy. It may lead us to step out of our comfort zone, to face the discomfort and resistance of others. But I firmly believe that, when we open ourselves to welcome the marginalized, we experience God's grace and joy in a profound and transformative way. Dear brothers and sisters, today we are invited to follow Jesus' example and respond to God's call to welcome and love the marginalized. We are invited to be a community of inclusion, love, and hope. May we come together in prayer and ask God for the strength and wisdom to fulfill this call. May the Holy Spirit guide us and empower us to be authentic witnesses of God's love in our words and actions. May he help us to see beyond appearances, to welcome the marginalized, and to share the hope and healing found in Jesus Christ. May the grace of God be with us all, empowering us to live according to the teachings of the scriptures and make a difference in our communities and the world. May we be agents of love, reconciliation, and justice, following the example of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>